When seventh grader Chris Kenny says these are his good friends, he means that they're a tight-knit group. My friend Chris Stokes, he is hilarious. He has a great sense of humor, and he's really fun to hang out with, and he's my best friend. And my other friend, Steven, who lives across the street, he's very courteous, and he's really fun, too. But when mom says they're good friends, she means that these boys are a good influence on her son. They get decent grades, they're honest, and they treat each other with respect. And I, I've got to tell you, one of the most important things to me is respect. Respect everybody, your elders, your teachers. Oh, yeah. Chris has adopted his mother's values, and so he's careful about how he chooses his friends. I'm not, I'm not going to go make friends with like, the wrong people, because then, you know, it make a bad impression on me. But not everyone is as clued in as Chris. Younger teens, uh, pre-teens, certainly are going through a social stage in their life where the importance of friendship, what their friends, their peers think of them, becomes very important and probably the most important thing in their life. So in this peaks around 12, 13 years of age. Unfortunately, by the time a child is 12 or 13, parents may feel they no longer have much control over who their children befriend. But that doesn't mean mom and dad should bow out entirely. Just talking to your child about what makes a good friend can help. Believe it or not, it may not be obvious to a child that someone who repeatedly hurts his or her feelings is not a good friend. We don't want to abdicate our role as a parent. We need to constantly, whether it's with the three-year-old, 12-year-old, or 17-year-old, constantly be asking questions, be involved with our child's daily activities. We need to be able to get engaged with them, their friends, uh, as well as their parents. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Probably one of the best ways to keep track of what's going on is to have those friends over at your house. Not to spy or to listen in, but just to get a sense of the kinds of kids that your child is hanging out with and then what's, what's going on when they hang out together. Of course, it may be tempting to step in the moment you first suspect that your child's friends are no good for him or her, but be wary of pushing your child away. How can I be a part of this process but not be too much of a part of it so that I drive the friendships underground and my child doesn't talk to me anymore? One thing that we've heard from um, a lot of our readers is that they keep telling their own children that they have choices that they can make. As one mother said, you know, I like to think that he's not going to be a robot and just follow that other kid uh, to do the wrong thing. I'm going to keep these talks going so that he knows he can make choices. He's his own person. I can't be with him 24 hours a day. There's going to be peer pressure coming his way. That, that's for sure. What I try to say is that, you know, um, you're going to make your own mistakes. Um, you can't say, don't ever do this. You prefer them not to, and you never want them to, and you hope they never do do. But um, I don't know if that's really reality. All right, guys, here you go. And if you're too quick to save your child from what you perceive as an unhealthy relationship, you may be cheating him or her out of a life lesson. We hate to see our kids upset, we hate to see them hurt, and certainly we hate to see them get into trouble. But they need, when it comes to their friendships, that they need to have that freedom to be able to mess up, learn from their own mistakes, and move on. That is how they're going to develop their own self-sense of who they are. Having a good sense of who he is has helped Chris choose well when it comes to his friends. I'm not like, you know, one of those kind of wannabes. I just want to be like myself and express how I want to be. Oh yeah, they got really mad. <laughs>